All right, guys, welcome back for another video from TDL DIY. So uh, today we're going to be uh, putting on this 90 degree fitting and throw it on this air hose. So uh, we're just going to modify this a bit so it comes down, goes into a regulator. I kind of have it mocked up already. So this air hose is a lot too, a little bit too long for what we need, but um, I'm just going to wrap it around and uh, throw this throw this uh, fitting on. I'll probably end up changing this regular just for the simple fact is I just want to I want to be able to mount it right here, um, and it's just not going. There's no there's no mounting bracket for this, so I'll probably switch it out for a different one. So, um, but let's let's get this underway and uh, see what happens. Alright, so now we're going to get a wrench and try and uh, tighten this up. I got that on, tightened up. Now we're just going to put some thread tape on the hose itself. So I'm going to do this side first because uh, I can just I can twist the whole hose. Like I said, I'll probably end up changing this fitting here. It's tight. Now I'll do the same thing, throw some uh, thread tight on this. The other thing you guys have to be aware of when you put a gauge in, there's usually an arrow, so it's a uh, air line goes this way, and then air goes that way. Because if you put it on backwards, then you're just gonna have air leaks in your system, and it's just not gonna, it's not gonna have that like check valve in there. So. Should be good. Now we can uh, straighten this out if it really bugs you, but uh, right now I'm just going to leave it like that. We're just going to uh, wrap this around here because it's so long. And then eventually, like I said, I'm going to probably switch that gauge out and we'll have one that bolts right to the front here so I can see what uh, how much air pressure we've got going on. And uh, this is a no matter what air pressure gauge you get, um, I think it's a good mod because then you're able to control the flow of air into your air pressure. You could have it down the line, that's fine, um, but if you have it right on the unit, you don't have to go down the line to adjust it. You can adjust it right here as you're working. And I think that's uh, that's it's definitely a good feature to have and um, it should be something that uh, pretty much all of them I think you should do like as long as you got an air pressure some or air pressure regulator somewhere on the line, um, that'll be fine. But if you can do it right at your unit, no matter if it's uh, air this or whatever type of station or um, device you're working with, then it, it's good, right? Like you could have it down the line if you're just running an air tool. You don't need it right on the air tool, but for this type of uh, like sandblast cabinets and stuff like that, you should have it. In my opinion, um, just right on the unit because then you can adjust it right there. So, enough with that rant. Um. All right, guys. So uh, I got some spots marked out. For um, remember, I said I was going to change this. Well, I'm not going to change uh, the regulator. Uh, my neighbor came over and said, "Why don't you just make a little bracket that will fit uh, kind of like right, right here, um, and, and you'll have to get a new one." And I said, "Hey, uh, that seems like a pretty good idea." 
So this is the bracket I made. Uh, I drilled out this big hole, cut some of the metal off, and painted it blue. Um, basically that metal came from the bed frame that I had, so that's uh, the same as that side there. And then uh, we just drilled a hole right over here and cut this whole chunk off. So, end result, this. Alright, so uh, I've already um, marked out some spots where I want. We're going to put it on just like that. Um, if you guys can see, yeah, just like that. Uh, we're going to put some self-tapping screws in. And if that doesn't work, then we'll just throw a bolt in. But I think self-tapping screws will work for this. Uh, then we'll just have to take this piece off, uh, put it through, and tighten it up. Simple as that. Now there's many ways you can uh, have this installed. You can put it uh, this way so the gauge is facing front and you can adjust from the top. You can uh, put it this way so you can look down and adjust the gauge from the front. So I'm going to do it like this for now and uh, if we need to change it because I find it's better then we will. There we go. It's pretty solid. It's not going anywhere. And I can adjust the, the valve. <clears throat> and this is kind of what it's view from up top. So this way I can look down. I know it's kind of upside down, but I'll be able to quickly see I'm at like 80 PSI or whatever. So I think that's the way I'm gonna go. Like I said, I can flip it the other way so the gauge is out front and I can adjust the dial on top. I could have it uh, this, you know, different ways. So uh, that's the way I'm going to go about that. I also have the power supply for this thing. I ended up buying it because uh, it was 20 bucks and we needed to run some type of lights. So uh, for lights, what I might do, uh, I think we've talked about it once before, is uh, I got these off-road lights and you can bolt it two up at the top. Or uh, you can go LED light strips, and you can pick those up at Amazon for like, uh, so with the, the off-road lights, I'll, I'll quickly show you. You can wire these ones in, guys. They're uh, approximately about 20 bucks on Amazon for two a set. Uh, and then you can just put them up on the corners. So one could go here, and the other one would go on the far side over here. Um, so you can do that. Or you can get um, LED light light strips and uh, get the ones that are cuttable. You know, you can cut it and you can link them together. But you can run it around the top, around your window, and have them pointed down. And they have three MT. And if you need something else, you can put uh, maybe like silicone or, or something. I found silicone works pretty good for like as a glue um, for for different projects. So I don't know if it's going to work really good in this uh, type of situation. But if that three MT doesn't uh, work out so good, then they're, you know, you can glue them in with, uh, you know, crazy glue, anything, epoxy, whatever you want to use. Um, and then you can just wire it into uh, to this here, like, uh, there's a little, you know, red and black, positive, negative terminal. And those LED light strips are super bright and 12-volt uh, system, so that's what this is. 
that's why I said the off-road lights would be a good uh, thing as well. So I'm not, I haven't quite decided on which way I want to go. I might get the LED light strips, and if I don't use it for this project, then I'll probably use it for my uh, gun case. So either way, I'm not, I'm not out. Like I'd still use it. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and order those up anyways. Um, but then it just gives you an idea of like uh, different lighting solutions, and you know what? Don't go buy the the Harbor Freight or the Princess Auto Light because even the Harbor Freight one up here is junk. It's an LED light bar, yes, but um, it, it, it's just not very good. So I've heard lots of complaints. But at least if you're going to do anything, buy the power supply. Uh, I know at Princess Auto they're 20 bucks. Kind of sucks. I think it should come with the unit. I think the Harbor Freight ones actually do come with the unit. Uh, so I wish Princess Auto would do that for us, but uh, they don't. So maybe it's something they can change in the future. Um, I also have some other mods I'm going to do to this thing too. So uh, yeah, just stay tuned. The, uh, a great little cabinet. I can't wait to, to get it up and running. It's been a, been a while. It's been sitting here for a while, not working. So uh, stay tuned, guys.